You know what sound that is, folks. You betcha it's another noon whistle. I'm Chris Trottier. And I'm John Anzalone. And I am here today with Mary Ellen Wright from Hope Now. Greetings. Hello, everybody. Welcome, Mary Ellen. Yeah, thank you for taking time with us. We appreciate it. And uh, we're going to talk about all things Hope Now, a little history of how Hope Now got started and where it's gone and Mary Ellen's involvement, as well as the rest of their group and board Mm -hmm. members Mm -hmm. and uh, all the good that they do for the immediate Elkhorn area, Mm -hmm. I guess, school Mm -hmm. district Mm -hmm. area. Is that Mm -hmm. correct? That's right. That's right. That's our service area is the Elkhorn school district area is our service area. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Mm -hmm. tell us how long has Hope Now been around? Well, we actually just celebrated 20 years of being incorporated and being a a 501c3 charity, a tax deductible charity. So it's been 20 years of incorporation and a few years before that as um, some of the churches in the local in the area here have noticed people kind of knocking on their door, asking for some assistance, either for rent or utilities and kind of that short term expense that popped up that they had to pay for. And now we're running short on what they needed you know, for their monthly expenses. And they, so a number of the churches got together and said, wow, you know, is this person, are we helping this person? Is somebody else helping this person? So um, a number of us um, church members, as well as at the time I was working as a school social worker here for Elkhorn School. We forgot to put that in, that your career with Elkhorn. I was just going to ask, let's not uh, erase how many years of service? 24. Oh my yeah. goodness. So, I got all excited. I blew right by that. No, I know you did. That's all right. Yeah. So, great. which is amazing yeah, that you. you have some special training in your involvement with Hope Now right. that you can assist people and you you have that background. Right. Right. And I I I'm glad to still be using my my skills and my profession to be able to be helpful to people and hear them and uh, you know give them some some hope and some resources um, to move along. So so we also had some people from um, human services that that got together with us and we really looked at what was happening in the community and what resources were available and what kind of assistance. But we really found that there was a there was just a little piece that seemed to be missing. And that piece was for folks that were really trying to manage month to month. But if they had an unexpected expense or unexpected loss of income, that just blew their budget. You know, they really um, couldn't make ends meet that month. So our primary mission is to help people either secure their own housing, like maybe with a help with a security deposit, um, or to help them sustain that housing. So maybe, again, there's a loss of income or um, an extra expense, a car repair um, that's unexpected, and they've run short. So we may be able to help them tide over for that month with some limited financial assistance. Uh, so which we pausing have, on mm-hmm, that a mm-hmm, second. Sure. Is, it, is the help always financial or not? Well, uh, people often come to us for the financial sure. help. And when we are able to do that, we pay that to the utility or to the landlord or to sometimes the car repair shop. Um, we don't provide it directly to the applicant. But sometimes we've, we've really noticed that when folks have one kind of concern for need, there's other needs. So we really try to you know look at our long referral list and resource list and um, get them in touch with other folks. You know, maybe it's the housing authority to get on this um, Section 8 housing voucher list. Wow. Maybe it's energy assistance so they can get help over the winter um, season. Um, maybe it's Salvation Army that they can get a little bit of um, assistance for. Um, sometimes, yeah, so there's a bunch of bunch of assistance that we provide, not only with the, with the finances, but sure. with the referrals too. And that makes a big difference which is pretty special yeah go ahead Chris. i'm going to ask kind of like let's get to the practical a little bit like what are the mechanics i know you know we have if people are looking at getting you know connecting with hope now we have the website Mm -hmm. at the bottom of the ticker we also that you can also donate your time and resources if you feel the feel um so inclined to do so what are kind of the mechanics of getting in touch with hope now what does this look like and then once you're done with the kind of, if I need assistance, what are the mechanics of that? Mm-hmm. And then kind of then how can I also be a part of this and feel part of the our local solution? Right. Thanks. Yeah. Um, well, again, people often are referred from other agencies and they call us or they hear about Hope Now. So they call us. Um, People sometimes say, can I come to meet you at your office? And I say, well, I'm at my kitchen table because <laughs> we're all volunteers. We have no staff. We have no shelter. We have no apartment. We don't even have an office. 
So we are pretty lean in terms of our, um, you know, our financial operating expenses. I think I looked it up the other day. It was about 2% of our, wow. our monies, you know, coming in. Okay. And so I'm hearing you say phone. Yeah. Call. yeah. Call. And then we talk to them a little bit. If they, we do have a website and it does have an email. So people have been in touch with us by social email. media, any social media there. We do have um, the website and then we have Facebook. Okay. But again, being so few of volunteers, um, we really encourage people to call. Okay, perfect. Uh, because yeah. we can have that dialogue. Uh, uh, sometimes people call and they're not in our area, and then we can refer them to, right. to the resources in their area. Or we are not the right fit for what they need. Mm -hmm. So we can help them get to somewhere else where they can get perhaps some some assistance. Um, but if it if it's an appropriate referral, we invite them to come to our, our panel meeting. Um, a small number of our volunteers meet tw twice a month with an applicant, uh, talk a little bit about what's happened in the past, what's going on now, and how they look to get back on track. And then that panel of two or three people decide if we can be helpful to them um, financially, and if so, to what amount. Um, the next day or two, we do a couple phone calls to landlords or utilities or whatever they're asking for to confirm the information. And if all checks out, then we um, go ahead and make that assistance um, for them. And again, be in touch to see if they need something else or can be assisted by other organizations or agencies. And there's a, yeah. some follow-up to this too, right? Not just always that you you help mm -hmm. them, <clears throat> excuse me, you help them, they're on their way, but then there's some checking in mm -hmm. down the line. Mm -hmm. We do a little bit of that. Um, we do a little bit of that. Um, a couple of years ago, we were given a small grant uh, by the Methodist Church in town um, that allowed us to pay a stipend to a, we call it a community advocate person. And that person then okay. will make a phone call a week or two, a month later and say, how are you doing? What do you need and stuff? But that's, like I say, that's not really a part of our budget per se, because we okay. get the monies for that to give that stipend to the follow-up person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you engage, Hope Now engages with other nonprofits for assistance. Is that right? We do. Sometimes it's a partnership, um, you know, between uh, Salvation Army and Hope Now, and sometimes even we've um, reached out to um, St. Vincent de Paul. Um, there are other organizations similar to Hope Now in some of our other communities, uh, Helping Hands in East Troy, Side by Side in Lake Geneva, Delavan Human Concerns, and they serve their area. Okay. So it's really, um, so we really have some nice partnerships with those folks too, to refer people in their areas that might happen to call us. Do you work with any agencies mm -hmm. like United Way, Elkhorn Fund, mm -hmm. anything like yeah. that for assistance with, I guess, dollars and cents? Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Um, our funding is um, from the community. We do not have government, you know, monies or government programs that fund us. So the majority of our funds come from individuals in the community, churches in the community. We are a United Way partner and an Elkhorn Fund partner, which we're very grateful for. Um, there are a number, a few uh, family foundations in oh. Elkhorn that have provided some monies um, to us, which we're very, very grateful for. And even in-kind donations. Again, St. Pat's Church has been gracious to um, allow us to use their address for our mailing address. We don't even have a post office box. So <laughs> <laughs> we're really lean. Um, and uh, the school district, Elkhorn School District, has allowed us to use some of their uh, buildings and meeting rooms um, to be able to meet with, with applicants. So um, we're, we're grateful for the help of, of a lot of other organizations organizations um, and folks. That well, and we're so happy, work. happy that we can help. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. would someone, if I wanted to make a donation or someone wanted to make a donation, what do I need to do? Can I just go to your website? Sure, sure. There's actually a link on the website um, that uh, you can use um, to get on and, and make a direct donation. Otherwise, people will write a check and send that <clears throat> in care of hope now, excuse me, <clears throat> to um, to the, the church office, the St. Patrick's Church office. Um, and, and that's good. We, we have, um, a, a need, uh, oftentimes all the time for more volunteers. Again, we're a small group. So doing fundraisers on our own, <laughs> mm, we're, uh, we're pretty, we're pretty small to do that. Um, so we have other organizations that will do fundraisers. There's even some school groups, um, that have done some, um, some, some fundraisers and such for the last many years, uh, Jackson elementary school student council, they've done their, um, their quarter days and, uh, they've sent us, uh, oh, that's for awesome. that. it's been really, really a great little partnership. Um, so again, but with volunteers, we can use 
volunteers all the time um, to be a part of our group, sure. um, whether they want to come and be a part of that and say, I'll write all your thank you notes or I'll get out. So I'll manage your Facebook page or your website for you. I can um, help with some, mm -hmm. you know, organizing some fundraisers or even some PR. There's some things we could use some help with because, again, there's a few of us and there's there's a good number of things to do. So, so belonging doesn't that yeah. mean you've committed to every meeting in that there's some tasks along mm -hmm. the way that could be filled by someone that says, well, I, I mm -hmm. can't make all the meetings or I can't go mm -hmm. to all the interviews, right. but I have a specialty in marketing or mm -hmm. I have a specialty in mm -hmm. this or for sure. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Our, we, we meet uh, our board meeting is on the second Wednesdays of every month. Again, St. Pat's let's just use a space. So we're um, second Wednesday of every month at four 30 over at St. Pat's to come and visit and say hi and see a little bit more of what we're about. But you know, the other thing I wanted to say is I think a personal um, touch of this and, and sometimes people wonder, you know, should I call hope now? Or I know a person who's in need, but I don't know if that's appropriate. And, and I think just, just making a note of some of the people that we've helped in the past and kind of their situations, because I mean, sometimes just last week, I got a call from a, a gentleman who had been living in his truck. Um, he had applied for um, housing assistance for a, a Section 8 voucher, you know, to help with his mm -hmm. rent. Finally, he found an apartment, which has been very difficult to do. <clears throat> we have people that have a voucher for help with their rent, and they cannot find an apartment um, that fits, you know, for what they're allowed. But he was able to do that. But now he needs to pay twice security deposit, um, you know had an eviction a long time ago yeah, yeah. credit is not good so now it's twice the credit twice the security deposit and again he has some income coming in a part-time job and some social security but um he's really struggling so needs that little bridge you know to get into his own place and then he can do that i had another uh, um older a uh, senior couple retired and they've been getting along on their social security and a small pension their 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 rent has gone up we've gotten so many calls that rent has gone up and they can't make it. They've taken on some part-time work, but they're not going to get a paycheck for three weeks. And mm -hmm. um, they're going to miss their, their rent payment that month. So we can help maybe with a little bit of that rent pay payment to tie them over until they're able to do that on their own. Um, we had a, a, a middle-aged uh, woman who was taking care of her two grandchildren because her daughter was doing some rehab. Good for her. Um, and so her and her husband were managing that. And sadly, um, her husband um, had some alcohol use issues and um, went to jail. So here she was at home. He had been the breadwinner. And now she, she was really lost. I mean, now what? So we were able to help her just tied over with a little um um, a little bit of rent. We got her connected with um, assistance for utilities. We got her connected with job service center and with um, child care assistance. So until, you know, her daughter got back home to take care of the kids. So oh. it's just a myriad yeah. of yeah. issues, you know. Yeah. I was going to bring this up and I'm thinking back to, you know, obviously you're, the majority of your career, you spend law enforcement, Mary Ellen, we work together at Elkhorn, you know, I'm in my 27th year. And I think about all the years being in front of uh, as a, in front of the staff, especially around, and you used to make a point to remind all of us um, that the holidays are not ideal for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I guess this is kind of like, I don't, I, I don't want to use this as a PSA, uh, but more of a call to action. Like now's the time where I'm guessing you would, you would advocate. Mm -hmm. We only have a couple minutes left, but really advocate for the support to come, Mm -hmm. um, come out, especially as we're giving thanks for the Thanksgiving and leading up to the holiday season, especially around that Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday. And mm -hmm. I'm guessing you may see an uptick in requests at that time. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I just wanted to, you know, thank you for what you guys do and, and just ask you, do you see in your years of experience in this position and working with this group, do you see this time frame being a, um, a time of more need? Sure. For support and resources. Sure. Thank you. Yes, that is because, again, when um, many folks are living paycheck to paycheck or month to month, um, when there's an additional expense, um, you know, sometimes back to school expenses in August and September, sometimes the Thanksgiving, the Christmas time where families and 
you know, they want to provide something for their kids, you know, for Christmas. Um, and so they just really don't have a lot of extra to do that, to make much of a, of a holiday for them. So we do get those requests and we send out um, a notice. It's called Hope for the Holidays. Um, and um, we've been asking uh, churches or businesses or um, individuals if they'd like to donate um, gift cards, actually, food gift cards, gas gift cards and store gift cards, then we can provide those to families based on their um, based on their family size. And truly, um, I think giving them the autonomy and the um, confidence that they should be able to pick out the foods that fit for them, they can pick out the gifts that fit for their kids. Um, I think that's an ounce of, you know, respectfulness um, to them to be able to do that. There are a lot of um, uh, charities and a lot of uh, holiday things going on. So I think people have a lot of choices in where they might want to spend their charity, um, their holiday charity dollars. Um, but certainly Hope Now is 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 one of those options. Um, and I just want to say one thing again, yeah. thanks to you two for doing this and giving people more of an idea of about the Elkhorn community and Elkhorn schools. You know, a thing that I've noticed over the 20 years or more that I've done this is that what, what kind of brings folks, um, you know, to being in to struggling. What I what we've really found is people who um, do not have their health or do not have their education and skill training have been two primary reasons why people have not been able to manage very well. So, I mean, I know that, um, you know, our schools do a great job in trying not only to give them a good education, but thinking about careers. You know, the College and Career Academy, you know, has been so helpful to so many young people. Um, and I think, again, for for the school district to continue to do what they can to address some, to some degree health, you know, with our kids, you know, whether it's physical health or mental health um, and their, and their career path has really can make a difference for people in the long run um, to have that education and that skill training. So thank yep. you for doing that. You're, you're welcome. That piece. No, and thank but, you for being on and thank you for leaving your social work career and <laughs> ultimately continuing that calling because mm -hmm. it truly yeah. is. We thank you for your service to our district and our community. And it's great to see you again. Thanks. John, it's about that time. What do you think? How do you want to close? Boy, you know what? I am, I'm full. I'm full after listening to Mary <laughs> Ellen and just like thankful that we have groups and people that do this and for all her I service know. to kids and community over the last 30 years, um, really helping us take care of Elkhorn. Yeah. And I think Mary Ellen, keep us, keep us in mind. I know John and myself, we're in, so many different spaces, you know, whether it's connecting with, you know, being at the at the youth build level and the Habitat for Humanity level, and then the Waukesha or the Waukesha, goodness gracious, Walworth County Housing Authority, and John's obviously his outreach, and we're part of Network or, or Rotary, and you know, keep us in mind. I know there's plenty of uh, times where our school district can continue to support those organizations and give a call to action to our kids and. It's a great community service opportunity, a great investment. So mm -hmm. um, on that note, John, I think we should uh, probably get everybody back to work, give the sound. Um, I do want to give a, a, a shout out to all the people, everybody who's been out and vote voted. Please, please make sure you take advantage of that important, um, important opportunity that we have as citizens. And it's not about who you vote for, but please, uh, please get out and take advantage of that, uh, your civic duty. So and on that note, John, Mary Ellen, great seeing you. Everybody have a great day. And yeah, it's time to go back to work. All right. <laughs>